Welcome to the inaugural video episode of Linux in the Shell. My name is Dan. I will be your host. This video is a supplement to the entry 000 redirection found on Linux in the Shell. It is a supplement showing the examples and not going into any great detail as it does on the entry written up on the website and also supplemental to the audio portion released on Hacker Public Radio. Today we are going to talk about redirection and that prepares us for the following episodes that cover a single command and because redirection is going to be one of the glues that we use to piece everything together to produce some pretty interesting outcomes. Redirection that we are talking about, the simple redirection, is going to involve three standard streams. The standard streams we're going to be working with is standard stream 0, which is input, standard stream 1, which is output, and standard stream 2, which is standard error. The first redirection we are going to talk about is redirecting standard stream 1, or output. And what we are going to focus on is outputting the results of a command to a file. And what we use to do that is the greater than symbol. So it's the output using greater than symbol. For example, if I ran the ls command in my home directory right now, I would see a listing of all the files in my directories in my home directory. What I would like to do is, let's say I want to capture that into a file called myfilelist.txt. I can easily do that by saying ls greater than symbol, which is redirecting it to a file called myfilelist.txt. When I hit that, hit enter, you will notice that there is no output on the screen. Instead, all the output has been sent to myfilelist.txt, which I'm going to view with the less pager. As you notice right now, what was once displayed to the screen is now displayed and dumped into a file. Now let's say I wanted to do something similar, but just pulling out all my PNG files in my home directory. If I hit enter, I will see only my PNG files. Now let's redirect that to myfilelist.txt and see what has happened. Notice that what was formerly in my file list.txt is now gone and replaced by the output of only the PNG files. That is because a single greater than symbol is destructive. It will overwrite anything that had existed before. So if my file list, as you saw, existed before with content in it, the single greater than symbol will obliterate what was originally there and replace it with the command that I just executed there. Now let's say I wanted to keep it. For instance, I wanted to add to that list by showing all my JPEG files. Well, that's very simple. Instead of a single greater than, I'm going to use two together, and that means append. Now, just like the single greater than symbol, the append will create a file if it doesn't exist and dump the output of the command into my file list.txt, but because it already does exist, instead of overwriting it, it's just going to append to the end of it. So now when we look at my file list, we see that it also oh, it also includes all the other files because I made a mistake and just did an ls. So if I did an ls.png my file list, we correct that by noticing single is destructive. Now we do a ls.jpg, this time is what we wanted. Two greater than symbols, my file list, and that's appending, so now we have my file list, the PNGs, and the JPEG. Pretty simple stuff. That is a basic redirection right there uh, using the greater than symbol. Now let's, uh, let's clear this up and go into a directory called varlog. This is my var log directory. If I do an ls, you'll see log files in here. Now, say I wanted to look for 
an instance of a string www, and I'm going to use the grep command to do this, which will search through all the files here listed, and I'm only just going to do the files, I'm not going to recurse into any subdirectories, so just into the files and look for any instance of www. So I'm going to do that basically with grep www asterisk, and when I hit enter, there's a lot of stuff outputted on the screen. Pay attention to almost the exact center, and look how beautiful that, that almost comes out there. Uh, in the exact center, there was an instance found in Pac-Man log, a couple instances of www, uh, the string was found. That is standard out right there. Now if you look at the blocks above and below it where it says permission denied, those represent standard error. It's because grep uh, when I execute it, because I'm not the root user, I don't have permission to look in some of those log files. And therefore, it's telling me or throwing a little bit of an error. But it's not a, a deal breaker. It, the error doesn't... Um, the error doesn't crash the program or stop it. It just reports an error and continues on, which is good. So what we have on this page is an example of standard in, I mean standard out and standard error. Now what we can start to do is, is clean this up. Let's say I didn't want to see the standard error. So what I would do in this case is grep www all that looking in there and I'm going to redirect standard error which is 2, standard stream 2 and I'm going to direct that to dev null, which will just, it won't show on the screen, it'll go to the bit bucket in the sky. So now when I hit enter, it's going to just show me standard out, not standard error. See that? Now if I wanted to see standard error instead of standard out, do the same thing but replace the two with one. Right there. So now I'm seeing standard error instead of standard out. Now, say I wanted to capture the output of this to a file called www.log in my home directory. If I did that, when I hit enter, you will notice that it went by so fast, I don't see standard out anymore. I only see standard error. But sure enough, in www.log, there's standard out right there. So standard out has been redirected. Standard error just shows up on the screen. We can do the opposite of that. Redirect standard error there to my www log and we will only see it on the screen. See? Let me clear the screen and do that again. Notice we're directing to standard error right there out to www log and when you hit enter we only see standard in. So now if we do less www log we see standard error in there. Last thing we will look at with regards to standard out and redirecting, let's say now we wanted to redirect standard out to www.log, but we don't want to see the errors. Simple enough. We redirect one to www.log, and actually you do not need to put one there. I could have just, I could just do this and leave the one off, and then redirect two to dev null. So when I hit enter, I won't see anything, but I have it redirected to, de to the file. Now, let's say I wanted to redirect both. I could do and ampersand, sorry, www.log. So then when I look at www.log, I now have both standard error and standard out. Cool. All right, let's... Uh, Let's stop this, uh, let's go on to the next bit of redirection, and that is redirecting standard in to um, a command, for instance. And a good example of this is, and this is a very impractical example, is let's clear the screen. Let's use the WC command, which is word count, with the L option, which means to just give me a line list and a, a count of all the lines, and then we're going to use my file list.txt. So what we're doing here using the less than symbol is to take my file list as the input to the command wc command dash l. So when I hit enter it's going to show me a value of 18. Now why do I say this is impractical? Because this produces the same thing. But essentially what we're doing here is we're taking um, 
the redirection using the less than symbol to redirect my file list into WC. Now, it, one of the cool ways of re, uses of redirection here, and I found this by doing Linux from scratch, is to create a quick and dirty text writer. And let me write out the command syntax here, and we're going to use the cat command, concatenate. So we're going to cat, and the cat output of cat is going to be redirected into a file called mypoem.txt. And to that, we are going to redirect some standard input until it finds an instance of the string EOF and a file. So when I hit enter now, I'm going to be presented with a prompt. So what we have here is standard in is being redirected to cat until it finds EOF and cat the input into cat is being redirected into my poem.txt. Now, what's our poem? Bash is cool. It will make you drool. Type, type, redirect, and write until your disk is full. EOF, and we're done. Now, if I look at my poem.txt, there it is. Bash is cool. It will make you drool. Type, type, redirect, and write until your disk is full. Very simple text writer. But that's an example of using redirect, uh, input redirection right there. Now, the final symbol we are going to look at for redirection is the pipe command. It's pipe symbol. Now, it's basically a vertical line, and you can find the, the pipe symbol on different places depending on your keyboard. It's typically above the backslash, but uh, it could be um, above the enter key or it could be up there in the upper left hand corner. I have seen it on keyboards. And when I say it's a vertical slash, it could be a straight vertical slash or it could be separated in the middle, almost like a colon, but instead of dot, the periods for a colon, you have just vertical lines. And that's called the pipe. The pipe allows you to pipe the output of one command to the input of another. So, and you can do this in some cases multiple times. So you can take the output of one command, pipe it to another, then pipe that to another command, and then pipe that to a fourth command. And you could chain together some very, very interesting uh, results. For instance, when I do an ls command, well, actually, let's do an ls l command to see a full listing of my directory and different files in there. You notice that it's all scrolled off the top of the screen. And we originally outputted this to a, a file before, but now, instead of outputting it to a file, we could just output it to another command, like less. Less, less, that won't work. Less, ls output to less. There we go. So now we can page through here using the last command of all the files I have in my home directory. Right there. That's the pipe. Another example, let's see if I only let's say I only wanted to see the first ten commands or first hundred files in my home directory. I don't even know if there are well here's a way to find out if there are a hundred files in my home directory. The ls wsl. There's 200 files in my home directory. Notice that we did an ls and we passed it to word count and did a line count. So each individual entry is counted. So that says there's 200 files in my home directory. Let's try. Touch. This is a test. And now if we did wls, 201 files. Let's see if we, let's say we wanted to see the first 50 of those files. Well, we can do ls t which orders them by the most recently created or modified file, pass it to head and say I only want to see 50, and pass it to less again. Let's also do this. Let's add an L on there. See that? This is a test. That was the last one we created. There's mypoem.txt, there's www.log, and myfilelist.txt, all that stuff that we worked on here. And it's, uh, it's good to go. So that's an example of, of chaining some stuff together. Now, let, let's go for one more. Um, here's a, a very impractical 
uh, usage of this, but there's other ways to go about doing it, as you will find out. But it's neat to see how you can change some of this stuff together. Now, let's say I was interested to find out whether or not I had Alice Cooper's under my wheels in my music directory here. And I have a number of different um, groups, and under, the, under those groups I have a number of albums, and there's music files in there. And they're all MP3. Uh, because that's, I buy a lot of stuff off of Amazon, and most of the stuff's MP3. Anyway, let's do this. Let's use the find command, and I'm looking for files named mp3, .mp3, and I'm going to print them out in a format that is going to just be the file name, because I don't want to get the full directory path, and I'm going to add a new line in there, and then I'm going to show you what I see right here. That's listing all the music files. Well, I want to find out if Under My Wheels is in there, so I'm going to use grep to do a case insensitive using the I command, under, to find all music files with the name under, because it's Under My Wheels, and that's going to show me a handful of files. So let me clear this to make it easier to see. Run that command again. You see that it has produced a, what, six files there, and of those six, three of them are what I'm looking for under my wheels uh, and three different files. So that, that there's that. Uh, what I can also do, if we go back to this command here again, let's say I just wanted to get a list of all the MP3 files right there. And I can uh, do a less command, pipe it to less, and you notice here that I've got a list of all the files and they have, they're or not really ordered, they're just ordered in the way they were found. There's no, no rhyme or reason to that, so I can pass it to the sort command, which is going to sort it in an alphabetical order, and you'll notice now, there they are, alphabetical order. I have now chained three commands together, the find, the sort, and less. Look at that. Now, what else I can do is instead of piping, piping it to sort, I could just exit, output it to um, musiclist.csv. Why it's CSV? I don't know too lazy to change it and if I go and look at less music list that's CSV there we go I have outputted the information that I've chained together directed standard out to the file so those are some basics there of text redirection or stream redirection so to speak and it's just a preparation for the work that we're going to show ahead using different commands and I wanted to get you familiar with some of the basics of redirection so that you don't get lost in, in some of the stuff that we do. Now, this was just a very, very cursory look at redirection. Again, I encourage you, if you have not already, to go to the website, linuxintheshell.org, and, and get entry zero and look and read through that to help you get a better grasp of redirection. And at the end of there uh, is my bibliography and links to more advanced topics on redirection and some really good information for you there. So I thank you for listening. If you uh, want to send me feedback, comment on these episodes uh, in, in the YouTube channel or Facebook or wherever you want to, or send an uh, email to dan at the linuxlink.net. And I thank you for listening. Have a great day.